So it's March 2018 and we've got several options to pick from when choosing a new gaming console. So which one of these works really well for you and which one should you buy? Coming up. Hey YouTube, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer, Mod here. And on today's video, I'm gonna be going in a little bit of detail of each one of the consoles that you see in front of here with the exception of the original PS4, which I don't currently have in my possession. However, I will talk about it in this video. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, you're on the market and you still haven't decided on what console you should get. And if you guys haven't seen my video previously, I've done one reviews in more detail on the PlayStation 4 Pro and on the Nintendo Switch, both of which I thoroughly enjoyed. But now you've got so many different options on what you want to pick and you need to figure out which one makes the most sense, which one puts the least dent on your wallet, or actually where is the most price for performance gained amongst all of these. I'll walk through each individual console and kind of explain you what the pros and cons are of each one. So let's start from the Xbox One S. At a price tag of $224, I would say hands down, this is the one that is probably the most budget friendly and will give you the most bang for buck based on how low cost it is. Price wise, it is definitely the most budget friendly. You've got your Ultra HD Blu-ray player in this. You have the access to all the AAA title games that are across multiple of these platforms. It comes with the new wireless controller that also syncs up with a PC in case you ever decide to game on a PC like I do sometimes. And it is much more smaller than the original Xbox One, which I don't think is available anymore. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think the only ones coming out are the Xbox One S as the budget one. You get access to the Xbox ecosystem, to all the games and, and all that stuff. And this is keeping the budget gamer in mind, the budget friendly gamer in mind. Not only that, but this system is also capable of displaying games in HDR and upscaled 4K, the main differentiator between these guys. So. It is only outputting a 1080p resolution for gaming. However, it uses a clever technique similar to the one that the PS4 Pro uses and even in some cases the Xbox One X to upscale games to 4K resolution. So your TV will be reading that it's it's running at 3160, sorry, 3840 at 2160 resolution. However, the game is not gonna be pure native 4K. For most people, I would recommend going with the Xbox One S if they're looking to just be, you know, the casual gamer that wants to play games and have a pretty decent resolution and, you know, is not too anal about, oh, I can see pixelated items here, or I'm gonna sit back and kind of enjoy the pretty visuals of this game. This does everything and it is the most budget-friendly option. Right next to it, we have the Xbox One X. Now, personally, I haven't had too much time to play with this console. I've only had it for a few days now, but I will say that there's definitely a major difference between the Xbox One S and the new one, the Xbox One X. At a price tag of $499, the major difference between the Xbox One S and the X is that this now comes with true native 4K resolution in a majority of games that are available on the Xbox One. With the new updated Xbox One X enhanced patches, most games are able to capture a 4K resolution and in some cases even a 60 frame rate, 60 frames per second rate while playing those games. Several games have also been given the option to choose whether you want to have a visual, uh, visual advantage of the game or you want to choose performance in the latter where you would get 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second. That's a neat thing to do because on PC you could choose that and kind of tinker around with your settings, but it's nice to see that some of the consoles are starting to take an advantage of giving you that option and flexibility to choose frame rate over resolution. And that's also similar with the PS4 Pro, which I'll jump into right after this. But for 500 bucks, you get a console that pretty much has all the good things from the Xbox One S, which mind you is half the price, but it comes with a beefed up processor, which is slightly more powerful. It has four gigabytes of more RAM. So the Xbox One S came with eight gigabytes of RAM. The Xbox One X now has 12 gigabytes of RAM. And that extra RAM really enables it to push out extra textures and details that you'll see when you look at crossed by, uh, sorry, when you look at side-by-side -side comparisons of games, that's when you'll see the, the actual graphical memory of this console shine. And now my honest opinion, I have a 
$2,000 plus gaming PC that has a GTX 1080 Ti in it. And I'm able to run most of my games at 4K ultra graphics and around you know, 30 to 60 frames per second, depending on what game it is that I'm playing. When I jumped off of that and hopped onto this, I did notice a bit of a difference, I won't lie, because that's the graphical detail on there is way more powerful. However, that's coming from me, who's been playing that for a majority of time and then noticing this. Now, if I had started with this, or if I was playing this on my couch, to be honest, I wouldn't catch the difference. The Xbox One X is by far, hands down, the most powerful console in the market right now. And it honestly does give a run for the money for PCs because I have more than two grand invested in my PC to outshine what's in this $500 machine. I absolutely support what Xbox One did here and what, sorry, what Microsoft did here. And I think that they are headed in the right direction with coming up with a hardware machine that's capable of keeping its competition at bay and giving competition a reason to go out and innovate. So, I mean, I don't mean to say that the Xbox One S is its own competition. I think the reason why they didn't want to cannibalize their own sales is the price difference as well. Not to mention that the Xbox One X, everyone knows, is not profitable for Microsoft at this point because they have too much stuff under the hood at the price that it's kind of hard to go out and build this part by part. You can go out and see a bunch of videos, part by part comparison of someone building a PC for 500 bucks. It's just not possible to get everything that you have in here for $500 with the ability to keep it as future proof as this is. Now, comparing a PC to a console isn't exactly fair because they both are really designed to do different things. One is dedicated towards gaming and the other kind of gives you limited options to do a whole bunch of other things, some video editing and stuff like that. So I wouldn't really compare them head to head, but in the gaming space, when you look at playing a game across multiple platforms and comparing it that way, I think it's a little bit more of an even playing field. However, to that end, I still think that this guy is doing a fantastic job at delivering excellent visuals and the most price for performance that you can buy. Now, I did mention that price for performance, I think this is great as a budget option, the Xbox One S, and you do get a difference. So between the two, I, I'm a person who likes to go with something that's more graphically powerful and I like be, I'm like one of those people who will sit down and play Skyrim or something and look at the visuals around in the map and enjoy that. So I would go with this system just because I like to be more up to date and get everything the best that I can get, according to my budget, of course. Now, that might not be the same for everyone. And so that's why the Xbox One X is not designed for everyone in mind. This is for those people who chase graphics. So definitely a solid machine here. Like I mentioned, it's got all the, the good things that the Xbox One S had, and then some on top of that, you get access to much better visuals across the board compared to every one of these consoles and even gives PC a run for its money. Up next, we have the PS4 Pro. I did an extensive review on this before. It is priced at $399 or 400 bucks pretty much, which puts it right under the Xbox One X. And I would say that this is probably the stiffest competition that the Xbox One X has right now. The fact that this is priced $100 less is why people tend to continue to purchase the PS4 Pro over the Xbox One X. However, take that with a grain of salt, because if you're chasing full power and full graphics, this is where you want to be. Now, most people, when they go to a display at a Best Buy or a GameStop and they're running both the games side by side, they can't really see the major difference. Because you got to remember, not every console gamer is the one that's looking at, oh, I want the one that has the most power in it or the one that has the best graphics. Because if that were the case, Nintendo really wouldn't have a market because Nintendo has never been about let's make the most powerful console, let's make the console with the beautiful graphics. They've always gone on being innovative and thinking outside the box. <clears throat> and they've also sold the, you know, their franchise of games such as Nintendo, the Kirby's, Donkey Kong, Metroid Prime, Bayonetta even for that matter. And they've relied heavily on software versus hardware. $400, you're getting a console that is capable of delivering most games in a checkerboarded 4K technique. So it's pretty clever how they do it. Most games actually run at 1800p, so it's not true native 4K. But then again, Sony never claimed that it is native 4K. It does come with a Blu-ray drive, although it's not Ultra HD, and it is probably the second most powerful console on the market. So for $100 less than the Xbox One X, you're getting a console that is slightly less powerful, but it is almost neck to neck in comparison when you look at some of the games. Now I did have a PS4 before having a PS4 Pro, 
And I think the Pro was a pretty decent step up from the PS4, because similar to the Xbox One X, the PS4 Pro does offer you the option if you want to play a game with better resolution or if you want to play a game with better performance. So it'll do 1080p at 60 frames per second, similar to how the P sorry, similar to how the Xbox One X is doing. So these are all great things. I mean, again, like I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this since I feel like I've already pretty much done a detailed review on this on the PS4 Pro. I think it is in itself based on its catalog and really largely on the exclusives that came out for Sony this year and the coming years and the past years is why Sony's been dominating the gaming space right now because hardware sales are part of it. You'll always have your game base of your, you'll always have your base of gamers who support one console over the other, but it really comes down to the selection of games that people enjoy to play. And right now, I mean, I don't want to be biased when I say this, but I think the Sony PlayStation has the much better library of games that are exclusive. Um, and last but not least, the Nintendo Switch price tag of $299 or 300 bucks. It's really hard to compare the Nintendo Switch across all the rest of the consoles, and I'll tell you why. The Nintendo Switch, to me, is doing something that none of these guys are. No, none of these guys can do what this is doing. While this is doing, you know, everything at a subpar graphical resolution, it barely hits 1080p on all of its games when it's docked. The screen's a mere 720p. The amount of innovation that they brought in this console, to me personally, and I'm not jumping on the bandwagon of everyone who supported having Nintendo Switch. To be honest, when I first heard about the Switch and looked at it, I thought it was a glorified 3DS or 3DS XL. I was not remotely interested in getting a Switch, but I've never been a Nintendo fan personally. When I did end up picking one up, because I got a good deal on it, and I figured that some of the games, the catalog has grown from the first three or four games that came out. I played Super Mario Odyssey and I played Bayonetta 2 as well. I enjoyed playing both of those games a lot. But the ability for me to play them on my TV and then when I'm at work and I have an hour break for lunch or if I'm getting bored and I don't have you know any meetings for the rest of the day and I've got some time myself, I just pull this out of my laptop bag and I'm playing the same game that I'm playing at home. Now, imagine trying to do that with any one of these. Yeah, let me go and lug my console around and plug it in, get HDMI and all that kind of stuff. So that itself offered such a meaningful experience to me that I can't compare it to the rest of these. So yeah, it is 300 bucks and I do think that, I still think it's a little bit expensive for what it really is giving you hardware wise. But if you think about all the features that this thing comes with, like you can detach the Joy-Cons and use it as separate controllers. And you know, to be honest, I'm gonna show you guys this just as demonstration, but playing with the Joy-Cons separated from the tablet has been one of the most comfortable experiences that I ever had. Being able to sit like this when you're on a couch in like different positions, kind of leaning over or kind of lying down, you know, when you feel really lazy and, and I'm fat, so I'm lazy. I can't explain it. Like, I think that was probably the most enjoyable thing for me on playing the Switch. I keep these in my hands and like, they're just dangling and I can play Like with a controller, you're fixed to playing like this, right? And so sometimes you can get fatigued like that or you want something to rest your hands on. Well, you kind of like get away from that problem. And believe me, this was a hard thought for me to get adjusted to initially. I thought, you know, the, the split controller concept was just not something that I was super sold by, but being able to do that, it was, is brilliant. I think that's why I think Nintendo still has a presence in the gaming market today. And they're still doing great at it because they're always bringing something new to the table. The Wii we saw was a major success. It brought motion and all the other consoles tried to copy it. You know, Kinect came out and Sony's uh, motion controllers came out. They start like people wanted to take some of those features, but they couldn't do all of what Nintendo was doing. And it's in its own right. It's the best console of its own category by saying. I bought this because I wanted the flexibility of playing any of my games anywhere I go. I did not buy this because I'm looking for graphical, you know, visuals. I'm, I'm looking for something that looks so pretty that I can go, ooh, ah, and show everyone. That's not what I bought it for. I bought it so that I have the portability to play any game that I want. And now with Nintendo signing on some of the bigger franchises and finally getting some good titles, it's, I think it's a solid competition and it's priced if they were $50 less, if this was for $249.99, I would much rather choose this than this. That's me personally though. So guys, I apologize that I didn't go into super detail of each one, but I'm trying to give you a synopsis of what it's like to have each console and why I personally got each one of these, how each one was different. 
And like I said, the outstanding different one was the Nintendo Switch because it's it's doing something that none of these guys are. These guys are kind of competing in the same realm, but it's just like, okay, one's a little bit cheaper and it's got a little bit lower graphics. Okay, this one's more expensive and it's got the best graphics. And then this one's right in between and you know, a little bit towards the higher side as well, but it also has graphics that's really great. And more or less between these two, it comes down to what catalog of games do I really prefer and do I care about having a 4K Ultra HD drive or not? That's one big differentiating factor. A lot of people look at that when they're making a console purchase because it might not just be for gaming. It might be a whole multimedia system that they're building in their home or part of their home theater system. So to that end, I will not recommend any one over the other, but personal preference wise, and I think you guys guessed this from my last review, I'm a Sony fan kind of, and I've always been playing with Sony but I do love what Microsoft is doing. I'm absolutely not a fanboy of one over the other. I just, I love the controller. I've always been more comfortable playing with a PS4 controller until I met the Joy-Cons. <laughs> but it's definitely something, controller-wise, I like playing with the PS4 controller more, and that's why my library of games tends to be a lot heavier on the Sony PlayStation 4 Pro versus the Xbox One. That's not to say that I don't enjoy playing on these. I think they are all spectacular machines. And if you're going out there to buy a console, if you're looking at price, here's where it's at. This is where you wanna go if you're trying to save yourself money. If you're looking at the best graphical performance and looking for having the most up-to-date console, this right here is what you wanna buy. You wanna buy the Xbox One X. If you're looking for something that has a really, really good graphical performance, can support 4K, has a whole bunch of options of 4K and HDR, but doesn't play games in native 4K or have a you don't care about a 4K Ultra HD drive, then this is your sweet spot. It's the PS4 Pro. That and the catalog of games, like I mentioned, is amazing on this. And last but not least, if you're someone who doesn't care at all about graphical abilities, who's okay to spend a little bit of money, you just want an experience that's different, that's fun, and that's portable. This is home for you, the Nintendo Switch. This is what you can play when you're on your way to work if you're in a, in a train or if you're on a plane going somewhere. I'm 29 years old, I work for a Fortune 100 company still to this day, and I take my Switch to work, believe it or not. No one knows about it, it's a little secret, but, but I do take it to work, and I do play it whenever I get a chance to because I'm still a gamer at heart, I've never kind of grown out of it. I don't think it's something that I can grow out of because I don't think it's something anyone would grow out of specifically. I think it's a hobby and I really thoroughly enjoy it. But guys, I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you were able to take away something from this today and figure out what next purchase you want. Of course, there's tons of content out there on YouTube. There's tons of reviews out on the internet that you can go and get into more deeper detail. I wanted to show you my personal opinion on what all of these mean and which one has its flaws and which one has its perks. So if this was helpful to you, please leave a like on this video and please do subscribe because like I said, it does help my channel grow and it helps me make more content like this. But until then guys, I appreciate you sticking to the end and watching. Have a nice one and I will see you on the next one.